Good evening there, everybody. What is happening? Hopefully, you all are having a wonderful day today. So when it comes down to it, I thought that I would talk about this little conversation that I thought was very particularly interesting. And this is going to be a subject, I believe, on the Skip and Shannon Undisputed show, where they talk about a recent little situation with Mr. Aaron Rodgers. And I thought that this would be a very particularly interesting conversation. And if you've watched a certain amount of my football content within the past, you already know my opinion of Aaron Rodgers. I think that he is a very, very great quarterback. I think that he is one of the all-time greats. Of course, he is going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. And what I also think about Aaron Rodgers on the other side of the coin, I think that he is an underperformer. I think overall that he is a blame deflector. And I also think that he is a narcissist, or at least has certain narcissistic, excuse me, narcissistic tendencies. And I pretty much was proven 100% correct about Aaron Rodgers with this. I've always said this about Aaron Rodgers. He has always been an underperformer. He has never been a good leader. And he will throw his teammates under the bus when he needs to. A lot like LeBron James. A lot like maybe some of the other blame deflectors out there. And what you notice about athletes that usually tend to mainly be blame deflectors is that they usually always tend to be underperformers. Now, that's not me saying that there are not some top of the line athletes like a Tom Brady or a Peyton Manning or someone else that, you know, that they're not blame deflectors. A lot of top of the line athletes, you know, even the best of winners, they're blame deflectors as well. Tom Brady, for example, is a little bit of a blame deflector. Any anytime he loses a game, he does not take it well. But Aaron Rodgers, when it comes down to it, once again, I've been saying this for a very, very, very long time. He has always been a blame deflector. And once again, what you notice about usually those type of athletes is that usually they underperform or they may lose some of the bigger fights or the bigger games or the bigger overall, you know, events within their career. That's why Deontay Wilder, when he ended up losing to Tyson Fury, him and his fans made all these bullshit excuses about how Wilder was drugged and this happened and that happened. And the reason why that was is because they knew damn well that Deontay Wilder could not beat Tyson Fury in a true <laughs> boxing type of style. That's why they made all those excuses about, oh, Tyson Fury should have been counted out and this happened and this happened. They knew overall damn well that Tyson Fury was going to beat Deontay Wilder as long as overall they were going to have a regular boxing match. All right, it is what it is. And Aaron Rodgers overall and LeBron James, the same reason why they blame deflect so many people is because they know deep down even though so many people have tried to stand up for them and tried to say this over the point in their career, Aaron Rodgers knows that he was never a Tom Brady. He knows that he was never a Peyton Manning. He knows that he was never a Joe Montana. And the same thing for LeBron James. LeBron James knows deep down that he's not a Michael Jordan. He's not a Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Because people overall that are on the level of those players, they don't usually have to blame deflect. They say, you know what? Let's get better. Let's overall try to see what we can do to adjust. But certain people like that, like that of Aaron Rodgers, he doesn't do that. He deflects blame on pretty much everybody else, whether it's the players, whether it's the organization, whether overall it's the GM when it comes down to it. He will deflect, deflect blame on everybody else. And this is what I've been saying about Aaron Rodgers for years upon years upon years now. And it has finally come to the light. But anyways, we're going to talk about what Aaron Rodgers had to say, in my opinion, and we're going to tune in right here. I just thought that it'd be particularly interesting. But anyways, let's tune in. Let's see what Mr. Aaron Rodgers had to say. Aaron Rodgers is standing by what he said on the Pat McAfee show this week. He said no one on the Packers raised an issue with him. He said on the show, quote, guys who are making too many mistakes shouldn't be playing. Got to start cutting some reps. Rodgers said he was being truthful. And needs to air things out. Shannon, what is going on here? Let me state this really quickly. Um, because this is at least my opinion of leadership. And Aaron Rodgers has always been a horrendous leader. He is not really a natural born leader. Uh, he's almost like a Kyrie Irving. I think that for his job, I think that for his position, he's extraordinarily intelligent and he is otherworldly talented. But as a leader, he's absolutely horrible. He has no actual leadership qualities that are actually good whatsoever. None. The same with Kyrie Irving. Even though Kyrie Irving comes across to me as a decent guy, he doesn't talk, he doesn't communicate well with his teammates, it's the same thing with Aaron Rodgers. And he also will blame deflect. He also will sometimes result to humiliating or throwing his teammates under the bus. Listen, in my opinion, what I'll say about leadership is this. I actually don't think that it's always a big issue 
I actually don't think that it's always a big problem to sometimes call out certain teammates or call out certain people on the team and acknowledge maybe when they did something wrong. Now, you do still have to be careful with that because if you do that even sometimes in front of the whole entire team, they can say, oh, okay, so you're going to be the main one that you know we use as our scapegoat. You're going to be the main one that all in all, you're going to be our whipping boy. You're going to be our whooping boy. You know, you're going to be the main guy that we blame deflect on from now on. But I don't think that it's a big problem if you're a coach or if you're the alleged leader of the team, as long as it stays within the framework of the team and within the locker room. I don't think that it's a big problem to say, hey, you know what? You could do this a little bit better. You know, overall, you know, you needed to make this play a little bit better. You know, on that, you know, particular play, it was your fault overall. And some people may not even like that term of leadership style because they may think that that gets a little bit too personal in my view, at least overall with my type of leadership style. If I was in charge of a team, I wouldn't mind, at least in the locker room overall, you know, just claiming this is what we need to do. Listen, it was a little bit of your fault on that play. We need to perform that better. You need to perform it better. We need to find a way to perform it better. I don't think that that's really a huge problem. But I think that the best way to do that is that you have to do it within the locker room and that you have to do it within the whole framework of the team. Because all in all, in my view, not only does that tell the player or not only does that tell the individual what we need to do, but I think that also tells the rest of the team when you do it in front of them, at least at times to, you know, basically say this is what we need to do. You know, one could say that that sets an example. Now, of course, another person may say, well, you know, that may not be the best idea. You might want to talk to them one on one. I can see either or. However, what you're never supposed to do, especially when you're in a professional sports setting, you're never supposed to go to the mainstream media where they know damn well that these vultures in the media, these interviewees and these guys all in all that, you know, basically go after these athletes. You're never so supposed to bring that outside of the locker room because not only overall does that really give off the statement that you really don't care about that person's overall, uh, you know, I'm not going to say well-being when it comes down to it, but it comes across as you trying to humiliate and embarrass that person. And it really comes off, in my opinion, as a piece of shit move when it comes down to it. You know, once again, I wouldn't have had a problem with it had Aaron Rodgers said this within the locker room, even in front of the whole entire team. But you don't say that overall to the media. You do not say that overall to the media to where basically it's going to compromise your whole entire team because now every team that you face throughout the rest of the season they're going to know okay something's mentally wrong with this team you know they're not really figured out yet and there's a little bit of emotional issues within that locker room it's almost kind of like you know if you have a girlfriend or if you have a boyfriend you know whoever may be watching this video (laughs) that's why they say a lot of the times in public keep it quiet overall you know correct you know Uh, your partner overall in private, not in public. Now, in my opinion, sometimes, uh, you know, will it be necessary to calm the situation down or, you know, maybe correct certain times? Maybe. But a lot of the times, overall, a lot of that stuff does need to be in private or within the framework of the team. Aaron Rodgers was not supposed to go to the mainstream media or say on the Pat McAfee show overall that, oh, well, certain teammates on our team, they're not doing the correct things uh, when it comes down to it, and some of them need to get cut. And if we're really going to be real about Aaron Rodgers this season, he really hasn't even looked that good. He's he's looked like absolute shit this whole entire season. So this is just Aaron Rodgers doing what Aaron Rodgers usually does and throwing teammates under the bus and being a blame deflector and a narcissist, which he always has been. But anyway... Aaron Rodgers being Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Brown being the, the terrible teammate that he is. Mm. Uh, what are you, what skill, what are first or uh, second year receivers supposed to say to Aaron Rodgers? I agree with that. And Aaron Rodgers knew that. Like, dude, come on. Like, there's, there's no one on the team that really can even say anything to you. Like, come on, man. <laughs> oh, they didn't say anything. Bro, really? First of all, they're afraid to say anything to you anyway. And then you think that, oh, because they didn't say anything, you're right. Oh, well, if they got a problem with what I said, they could have come to me. The same damn way if you had a problem with them, you could have took your ass to them and not go on the Pat McAfee show and air them out. I agree. And once again, I would have not had a problem had Aaron Rodgers even said it in front of the whole entire team. And some people would not even like that leadership style. But in my opinion, I don't think it's always bad to do that. You just have to do it in a correct and logical and you know 
emotionally intelligent way, but you don't do it overall to the media. You don't go to the Pat McAfee show. You don't go to the Colin Cowherd show. You don't go overall to one of these media shows, one of these podcasts overall, and just state what you stated. That was a very, in my opinion, uh, overall, it was a very stupid move. But, you know, this is just Aaron Rodgers being Aaron Rodgers. Well, I didn't call anybody. About <laughs> Who the hell you think we talking to, Aaron? Mm. You're talking about your receivers. He just doesn't get it. Mm. Now I see why Devontae left. Turned down less money to come. Turned down more money to come back. You know what also needs to be stated about Aaron Rodgers once again? He's been a blame deflector for his whole entire career. And he's not the only quarterback that has been a blame deflector. Tom Brady's been at times a little bit of a blame deflector, at least at times. Uh, you know, Peyton Manning more than likely was to a certain degree. Uh, you know, ben, Big Ben Roethlisberger certainly was a blame deflector. There's a lot of high-level athletes or high-level quarterbacks especially who, of course, get a little bit of that diva or very competitive complex when it comes down to it, and they can tend to be blame deflectors. But Aaron Rodgers especially, I've never seen a quarterback, at least throughout my time, that was as much as a blame deflector as what Aaron Rodgers was. <laughs> so it just is what it is. And what he always bitches about the coaching. He always bitches about the general manager and this and this and this. But you notice with Aaron Rodgers, and I said this overall in my last video that I did about him, he still did not leave the Green Bay Packers. He still remained with the Green Bay Packers. You know, he's just like LeBron James in a very similar sense. Let me give Skip Bayless a lot of credit overall for the talking about Aaron Rodgers. And yes, in my opinion, he does get on that hater rate a little bit with Aaron Rodgers, but he's also told a hell of a amount of truth about Aaron Rodgers and for that matter, LeBron James. They're both extraordinarily similar to where overall Aaron Rodgers has the power, as does LeBron James, to basically pick the coach, to pick the GM, to pick this, to pick that, to pick the players, overall to pick the, you know the contracts, to pick this, and then when things don't work out, you know, it still overall is not his fault. Nothing is ever those two guys' fault. So they're very, very similar in that category. This joker here, mm. you're a terrible leader. You're not a good leader. You know, I've tried everything. You know why? Everything, nothing's worked? Because you are a terrible leader. Mm -hmm. you're a ter I agree. Aaron Rodgers has always been a terrible leader. He has never been a good leader. And I've been saying that now for years upon years upon years. You can get him to quit. You can get him overall to... Uh, get a little bit rattled. His body language is not good, especially when losing in certain games. You can get him to tighten up. A lot of the times he crumbles under pressure. And on top of that, he's not a good leader, even with his teammates. He will blame deflect. Terrible person to be around. Yep. Go back and check the tapes, what I said about him at CBS. And, and Boomer, me and Boomer got into it. Boomer said, well, he's a great player. I said, just because you're a great player doesn't make you a great teammate. Mm. I felt that when I went there. That's neither here nor there for Skip. Skip, look, I, I don't get it. Aaron Rodgers has a 26th QBR in football, 40.5. You know who he's behind? Ryan Tannehill. Mm. You know who he's just in front of? Justin Fields. Mm. So, Aaron, I don't think I'm breaking any news. I'm not interrupting any normally scheduled program. You're playing bad, bro. Yep. And the thing is, is that when you're playing good, you can yell and scream and call people out. But when you're not playing well, people look at you sideways. Mm. I give it, you know, it's kind of like uh, what my Aaron Rodgers, once again, has really been exposed for what I have always said that he was within these past few years, which, once again, I have to give a great amount of credit to Skip Bayless because and, and Colin Cowherd, for that matter, because those have really been the only two people consistently within the NFL media to really criticize Aaron Rodgers the way that he deserved to be criticized. Now, a certain amount of you people may look, you know, well, <laughs> you know, it looks like you have a hard on for hating Aaron Rodgers. I do not hate or love any of these athletes, but I have been claiming this about Aaron Rodgers for the longest damn time. And the NFL media and his fanboys have been protecting him for years upon years upon years upon years. A lot of the results that have ended up in Aaron Rodgers' career are usually his fault. Murphy say it. Yep. Don't you be the problem. Yep. Because he knew all along you were the problem. That's why he said it. Yep. And you got upset. Oh, I talked to Mark. He said it. You know he said it. And you know you've been the problem. Mm. He and I would have had a problem. Some serious I would problem. say. Some serious problem. Because I don't care how many touchdowns. I don't care how many MVPs. You're not going to talk. You're not going to put me on blast. That ain't going to happen. Mm. 
So, to me, I'm going to take it one level deeper. I think Aaron Rodgers, as a leader of a pro football team, hit absolute bottom yesterday. First, he calls out, without naming anybody, his whole team saying that at least 20% of the plays in every game, we have a mental error on. But he didn't say whether uh, what percent of those plays that he made a poor decision on or a poor throw on. Correct. Because that's the whole big bigger part of the equation, Correct. right? So he calls out his team, and then he says, see, I'm right. Yesterday he says, I'm right. He says, if one of those guys has a problem with it, I'm right here. He's like daring them. Well, come. I agree uh, overall with Skip Bayless here and Shannon Sharp. Aaron Rodgers knew damn well that those first or two-year second receivers that – they're more than likely not going to have the courage to say anything. He knew damn well of that. Aaron Rodgers is intelligent enough to know that. And that's why, in my opinion, and once again, uh, I'm not, you know, I, I don't always think that it's necessarily a bad thing to call out certain teammates. But once again, you do that in the locker room. You do that within the presence of your team. And even then, sometimes you have to be very careful. And, you know, sometimes you'll have to do more one-on-one -on -one depending on the personality of it. Excuse me personality that you're dealing with and also to make sure that maybe that person doesn't feel victimized or someone overall that is being singled out or maybe to give off the impression that you know oh this is going to be our whipping boy but you go to the pat mcafee show and apparently overall call out your team or call out these like come on dude come talk to me i dare you to come talk to me he's shaming them he makes 50 million dollars a right. year he's the back it's almost like a bully what a bully overall will always do is that They'll always pick on the kid that looks weak or they know more than likely that they won't fight back. That's pretty much overall, uh, you know, what Aaron Rodgers did. Back MVP of this league. Is Romeo Dobbs going to approach no. him in his locker and say, Aaron, I'm calling your bluff on this. No. I don't think I've had any mental errors on any plays, right? Well, he's not going to say exactly. that. Exactly. And, and Aaron's using that to say, look at me, I'm right. And, and then he says, I don't understand why people have a problem with things that are truthful. Well, what's... And I understand where Aaron Rodgers is somewhat coming from, from that perspective. But even if we are being a little bit truthful, there's times overall to say certain things, and there's times not to say things. And you don't go to the NFL media overall and blame someone because that is going to compromise your whole entire team. Not only does that ruin the interpersonal relationship between you and your teammates, but on top of that, once again, now every coach and every NFL team that is going to face the Green Bay Packers this year, they're going to be like, oh, they're mentally done. You know, something overall is mentally going up with them. You know, that is not a cohesive unit. So we can take advantage of that. We can get them to quit. We can get them a little bit more frustrated overall than what they, you know, maybe what another team could be. So that it was a very unintelligent move, in my opinion, by Aaron Rodgers. But I don't really expect much else. It's not that he's not an intelligent person, in my opinion. It's just that, all in all, Aaron Rodgers, he has no leadership qualities whatsoever. None. Never has. The truth about your performance, yeah. because th those numbers scream that he's made a bunch what, of errors. What about, what about them championship games? Yeah. What about them? Your play. Was that, was, was, did, you make any, did you make any errors? What about the double cover uh, last year in the divisional round? Yep. You threw that ball to Devontae. He was double covered. And Alan Lazar said, hey, look at me. He look did. at me. Get, get your... So what, so what was that? Mm. The problem is he's a guy. He never it takes accountability. And because he has those four uh, MVPs, Skip, people are willing to... Well, you know a big part of the reason why Aaron Rodgers never took accountability, Mr. Shannon Sharp? It's almost like a spoiled child. A spoiled child, when it comes down to it, is never forced to take accountability until that first time the parent overall cuts them off on their credit card. Or they say, no, you know what? Well, you know, you're not getting overall, you know, that new laptop. You're not overall getting that new PS5. You're not getting that new car. You know what? Overall, you're going to have to earn it. Aaron Rodgers has been so overall coddled by the media to where overall he never really has had to take blame for anything. You know, it's the same thing with LeBron James. You know, people overall get away with what you allow them to get away with. And the NFL media has been kissing that dude's dick for the past, I don't know how many years. 
give him the benefit of the doubt. Yep. I do not believe no matter how accomplished you are, you are void, you are you can be devoid of criticism. Yep. Aaron Rodgers thinks that he's above criticism. He does. He rubs Of course he does, because really to be quite honest with you, Mr. Shannon Sharp, and this is a big part of your fault as well, <laughs> the majority of the time he is. The majority of the time the NFL media overall has once again pretty much kissed this dude's ass to completion overall to where this is a big part of the reason why he's like this. Aaron Rodgers really overall is now only starting to know what true criticism is like within these past few years. I don't care what anybody says. He rubs his teammates the wrong way. Yep. They don't rally behind him I agree. like Brady teammates. Or yep. Even LeBron James, in my opinion, may get a little bit more criticism than what Aaron Rodgers does. And LeBron James, he, he might have debatably the most kissed ass overall of all time that I've ever seen in NBA history. LeBron James even sometimes gets a little bit more criticism than what Aaron Rodgers does in the NFL media. Like, for whatever reason, this dude overall, for whatever reason, always gets the max amount of ass kissing, you know, out of any other person that I've seen in the sports media. We rally behind John Elway or guys that rally behind Peyton Manning. I agree. They don't. They don't. I've called him from day one on this show, the all-time finger-pointing blame deflector and also the all-time master media manipulator. He's trying to... Agreed. Pretty much the football version of LeBron James. I agree with you, Skip. You've been saying it for the past 10 plus years, and I've been right on board with you. M manipulate the media into saying, boy, it's Aaron, them. Aaron, it's, it's their, their fault. Yeah. Poor Aaron. You know, he's stuck with all these idiots. Around. And then he had to have the nerve to say, I'm not just putting one or two guys on blast. I'm alerting everybody that this hasn't been good enough. <laughs> what about you? Have you been good enough? I, at, one, at some point in time, I said, you know what, guys? I, we're well, in my opinion, what Aaron Rodgers overall did, I don't even think that it was exactly like that. Because it sounded like he was calling out specific guys. Now, I don't think that he mentioned any names. But to go to the degree to where you say that, Certain people need to be cut. Dude, you're talking about first or two-year wide receivers. And at the end of the day, if you're supposed to be as great as what some people allege that you truly are, you're supposed to make that team overall a playoff contender. So anyway. I play. Like, we're not we're not and it's the same thing with lebron james like lebron james fans always will always tell you the same stupid bullshit oh lebron james doesn't have any help well if lebron james is allegedly supposed to be the greatest ever and that this is a team sport why overall is he not making the team and the players around him that much better that's why you know this narrative that overall that lebron james always makes his teammates that much better that's always been a bullshit lie it just is what it is and you can take a look at the numbers on that. You know, overall, uh, there's been certain players overall that I've seen, you know, with lesser teams than what LeBron James has had within the past few years. And sometimes they either made the finals or they had a very serious chance of winning. You know, once again, people always say that LeBron James, that he can just take a piece of tissue paper and a shoelace basically to the finals, you know, and be a finals contender. That's not true. It never has been true. LeBron James, just like Aaron Rodgers, they need the max amount of talent on their team or they're not even going to contend for a championship. And that includes me. Yep. It never includes Aaron. No. It's always everybody else. It's always somebody else. When is it going to be Aaron? <laughs> Boy, you got the right one. Them young, them young guys, they let, you, they let these quarterbacks talk to them any kind of way. Mm -hmm. Not O'Shea. Oh, no. No, no. Bro. You're not going to talk to me crazy. No. That ain't going to happen. It's a pretty harsh spotlight this week, guys. Sunday night football, Packers on, headed Buffalo. up to Buffalo. Please, Buffalo. And might I say, y'all are having an awesome show. Just <laughs> You know, overall, Aaron Rodgers must have pissed off uh, Shannon Sharp overall when he's open that Buffalo whoops Aaron Rodgers' ass. Because Shannon Sharp was a very, very, very big Aaron Rodgers fan. And I think that he's starting to lose a little bit overall of that fanboyism for Aaron Rodgers. Because he's starting to realize what he actually is. Something that Skip Bayless and I and Colin Cowherd have been saying now for the past 10 plus years. Your moderator starting it out saying it was Friday and then losing connection. But I'm back now. Thank you. All right. Welcome you know, back. This is a crazy story. What was Russell Wilson up to on the Broncos flight to London? But anyways, it appears overall that that is it for the video. I just thought that I would talk about that because I'm glad that Shannon Sharp overall has realized that Skip Bayless was 100% correct about Aaron Rodgers' this whole entire damn time. <laughs> so, it is what it is. Uh, but, you know, best of luck to the Packers overall, especially since a couple of my very good friends 
are major Green Bay Packers fans. But do I believe that Aaron Rodgers is going to lead the Packers to the playoffs? As of right now, it doesn't look like it. I wouldn't be shocked if they made the playoffs because the NFC, to be quite honest with you, it looks like a dumpster fire, at least when we just talk about all-around talent. Uh, but we'll overall see what ends up happening there. The AFC, in my opinion, is the true conference that really has all the talent right now. I mean, you're talking about Mahomes with the Chiefs, Wilson with the Broncos, even though they don't look that good right now, Josh Allen with the Bills, Derek Carr with the Raiders, you know, Justin Herbert with the Chargers, I believe, you know. And then, of course, you got Lamar Jackson with the Ravens and Burrow with the Bengals, Tua with the Dolphins. That That is the division to watch out in right now. And that's not even, you know, to mention certain teams that might make it like the Patriots or, hell, who even knows, the Colts. So we'll see what happens. But anyways, that's really about it for this video. I just thought that I would talk about that because that was very particularly interesting. But anyways, that's really about it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you all later.